2007 Jeep Wrangler. The uh, infamous transmission line leaks. So what happens? If you get a few drops on your driveway of some fluid coming from the left front corner of the uh, Jeep, when if you look at your suspension and you see a couple transmission lines, they'll be covered up with some kind of fluid along with everything else underneath in this corner. You can see the drips of everything. The axle it will generally have fluid on it along with everything else. So uh, there's already a couple videos showing pe people cutting the ferrules off of the uh, lines right here and just putting some new hose on and clamps and that's what we're going to try here but I'm going to try to do this as easy as possible instead of keeping the lines attached right here to where you kind of got limited access we're going to uh, go ahead and pull the lines off so that we can have them out and uh, accessible and I'm going to show you the easy way to do that you know it looks like it's real tied up in there and it kind of is but if you follow the lines around what you'll get to right here I don't even have the, the wheel off or anything I do have them turned you don't know um, but if you look right here you'll see the the lines are coupled right there and I'm going to show you how those come off to where we can get these lines out a lot easier than trying to do it cramped up in there so I'm going to try to get the light to where this will be illuminated to where you can see let me see if I can get this light mounted somewhere and I'll, I'll be back Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. There's there's going to be two lines there. I have not removed anything. The the, the plastic inner fender well is still installed. Um, basically, I'm coming in here with a screwdriver. I'm going to pop the little these little covers off. I don't know if you can see that or not. I've got that one popped off. Now for the black one. I'm just going to get in here. I'm just going to move those up and out of the way so now you can see what we got now there's little clips that retain those lines in there and they make a little special tool you don't need it you can use a pick it is a very common tool that people use to take those off so I'm going to try to position this light up top shining down on this area so that I can get those clips out of there um, and be able to hold the camera on it so that you can see what's going on <clears throat> and it's also a good idea so I'm, I'm just looking at them I'm not going to mark the lines but you can kind of see the top one has the more, it's almost a 90 degree bend, it goes into the top. The lower one um, has a more straight, before it bends, the more straight, you know, about three inch straight uh, piece before it starts to make its bend. So just remember where they go, that way you're not fighting, trying to get them snapped back in there. Um, once these are out, <laughs> The clips are made to where you put the clips back in before the line even snaps on. So the clips will be in there and you just push the line and, and it spreads the clip out and it snaps the line in there. Super easy and the reason they do that is so it's faster on the assembly line. Um, it's not the best connection but it's fast on the assembly line for them to uh, put this stuff together. But let me get a pick. I'm going to try to position the light up top so that we can get this done. 
Okay, I'm going to try to do this left hand. I'm holding the camera with my right hand and I'm trying to pick this out of here with my left and I'm right handed so this might okay I don't know if you can see I've already got this clip almost out of there okay it's almost out let me try the bottom and then I'll get some needle nose so the, the light's not really doing me any good on this bottom one so I'm just trying to go by feel And of course they had to okay let me I'm gonna get this bottom clip out you can see the top one I've already got out I'm just, I don't want it to flip off there and lose it so I'm just gonna I'm gonna grab a uh, uh, pair of needle nose and pull it on out of there and then I'm gonna get go ahead and get the bottom clip and then I'll uh, come back okay so I just reached down there pulled the bottom clip out pulled them both out with needle nose that I didn't lose them so you can see the lines are disconnected it's that easy to get same type of setup pull those little plastic covers off and then uh, you got little clips that, that pop out of there transmission is going to be even easier because it's just right here um, I was able to just pull that off with my finger Then you got the same little clip, that line will pop out, then that line right there will pop out. Okay, I've already got the clips popped out. There they are. Lines are still pushed in there. Before I just pull these out, I want to make sure I'm out of the way because there's probably going to be a little bit of fluid come out of here. And I don't want to get bathed in it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and get the bucket. Okay. There it is. Okay, I'm going to go Let it drain in the bucket so that you're not making too much of a mess. A whole lot shouldn't drain out. Most of the fluid's going to be below that hole. Most of it's going to be in the pan. There's the whole assembly. Right here. So basically I'm going to replace both these lines. I'm going to cut these ferrules. I'll show you that. We'll measure the line, we'll go ahead and put them back same length, and then uh, we'll reinstall. And I'll show you how easy it is to snap them back in. Let me get my uh, grind uh, cutoff wheel. I'm just going to use a Dremel. I'm going to start with a Dremel. These are aluminum, so I'm going to start with a Dremel. Dremel should be a good tool to uh, cut these off. So let me get set up. Now obviously this manifold is about 80 bucks online I think. Uh, highly recommend just changing the whole manifold. You know I mean if, if you want to order it online as long as you got time to wait. Uh, whenever it comes in just replace the whole thing. It's, it's very easy to pop out of there as you can see. Just pull those little snap clips out of there. Um, pull the line out. Put your new one in. It's that easy. I'm going to go ahead and you know, I, just, I literally spent three dollars on some hose, so I'm going to give that a shot first. If that doesn't seem to work, then uh, I'll just order a whole new uh, hose assembly. And I'll show you how I'm going to cut these. So I've just got a Dremel with a cutoff wheel. Got safety glasses on.
Okay, well, as luck would have it, the memory card filled up right whenever I was getting ready to snap these uh, pieces off. All I did was these pieces was on like that, I think was the last that you saw, and I was getting ready to just prime them apart. I just pried them apart, used pliers to, to snap them off there. Literally, it took about 60 seconds to get all, all four of them off. Um, and I think... Like I was saying, don't cut so deep that you score, you know, this piece here. Because you want that line to, to clamp around that nice and tight and uh, not leak. So, the next step is going to be to put the, clamp, the lines and the clamps on. So, I've got a bunch of these worm clamps. And you don't want to clamp them so tight that... Um, rubber's squeezing out it, it it surprises me how tight people tighten things up basically all I'm gonna do I'm gonna double you don't necessarily have to put two clamps on um, each line but I'm going to and I, <clears throat> try to orientate these the same as they're all the same So that's about where you want them. So if the line, you know, if that piece is sticking in there, ho hopefully you can see that. You want to make sure that both clamps are tightening up. Doesn't necessarily have to be on the serrations, but it's not a bad idea. So I'm going to put two clamps here, two clamps on each one. Um, orientate these so that the heads are not digging into the other hose. So just make sure they're rotated around so that you know you don't end up inducing a leak later on. I'm going to loosen these clamps off just a little bit. They're all just almost too tight. And I'm not going to tighten them up right here. I'll snug them because once these are tight you don't want to uh, twist the lines. Hopefully you know what I mean by that. And I took a towel, uh, towel and I, I wiped these off so that so that they are not. Well, I guess I can put those other two clamps on. Huh? you don't want any dirt in the lines or the uh, on the uh, metal tube itself that one's about the tightest what wrong Now I'm just going to snug these up just a little bit. I'm going to get the clamps positioned exactly where I want them. I'm going to snug them up. I'm going to fish the line up there. Snap. I'm going to snap these ends in there. I'll show you that. Um, and then we're going to press on. So. So let me get these kind of snugged up. Let me get this line kind of fished up in there. And I'll get all four uh, ends in position. And I'll show you how to snap the clips on and then how to push these lines in. I'll be back. Okay, so this little clip has to be put back on here before you snap the line back in. And I'm going to try to do this one-handed. Okay, that wasn't it. I'm trying to hold the camera and I'm trying to do this so it, it may take a couple tries. And then this this line right here is in, in my way. I 
There. So hopefully you can kind of see the way that all three of the little ears are in the hole. So the line will just snap right in. I'll just push right in. Those things will come out and then re-snap. See if I can get that top one. There. There's the top. So those are in. I'm going to do the front and then I'm going to uh, position the line, the, the uh, hose assembly. Oh. Okay. Got both these lines snapped in. I pulled on them, make sure they won't come out. That's always a smart thing to do to make sure you got them snapped in. Tug on them and wiggle them and make sure they're not going to pop out. Now all I'm going to do is put the little covers back on and then I'm going to take it up to the car wash and uh, clean it all up. That way if it does leak again, uh, I'll be able to more easily see where. Anyway, that's it. A lot easier, I think, than trying to cut those hoses off and get them put back on there with this on the car. I mean, these lines come out so easy. To me, there's no reason to, to do it on the car. Pull the, pull the hoe assembly out so you can do it, do a good job, put it back in. Um, it's a pretty easy job. Uh, with filming and everything, I've been out here 45 minutes, probably. So if I wasn't filming, I could I, I could have done this in 30 minutes and been done. So it's not that big of a deal. And you don't have to use a uh, Dremel. Uh, that was just the best tool that I had for the job. You can use a regular pneumatic cutoff wheel, any kind of a cutoff wheel. You can probably even hacksaw them off if that's all you've got is a hacksaw. Um, Oh, one last, uh, one last thing. Don't forget to service your transmission. This is the amount of fluid that ended up draining out. It's probably a quart and a half. And to do that, you're going to fill it up right there. The transmission dipstick. You're going to want to have the engine, uh, the vehicle warmed completely up shift it through all the gears um, two or three different times make sure you get all the fluid circulating in the transmission put it in park make sure you're on a level surface and check the dipstick and there's a mark that tells you when it's full and just fill it until that mark uh, until the level is up to that mark and you'll be good to go again make sure it's warm Make sure you're on a level surface and make sure you shift it through all the gears. Reverse, drive, low, second, all the gears to make sure that the fluid's circulating throughout the transmission. And that's it. Later.